Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, my ex-wife, 36 female, still keeps trying to get back together with me, 36 male, and our daughter's 16, want that to happen too. Come, let's explore these real life stories. Doesn't really sound like a big problem, right? Yeah, well, while I wish I could just plain tell her to leave me alone and never bother me again, there is the matter of us having two daughters and sharing custody, so I can't excise her from my life on a permanent basis. Not without removing our daughters too. We married fairly early in our lives, back when we were 20, and we had been dating for three years before that. Our daughters were born in the very first year of the marriage, and there were some complications, which meant my ex-wife would have difficulty conceiving again. It didn't matter to me at the time, because I was just glad she made it healthy and fine through the whole ordeal and that we already had two beautiful baby girls to love and raise up. The marriage lasted for nine years. It ended when I divorced her for cheating. I have absolutely no tolerance for it, and I don't believe in forcing myself to suffer needlessly for something that wasn't my fault to begin with. While this might sound incredulous to some folks, any love I had for my ex-wife was pretty much killed when I found out about her cheating and the details behind it. So yeah, this isn't a threat about me moving on from her. I've done that seven years ago. Hell, I don't even hate her, I just don't give a damn about what goes on in her life unless it concerns our daughters. The problem is that it's only me who moved on from the whole thing. The ex-wife, her family, and even our daughters have kept trying to get us back together even though I have made it plain for everyone that I have no interest in ever doing that. Me not dating at first for a few years after the divorce might have been giving them false hope, but I sure as hell wasn't going to jump into another relationship so soon after. Not with our daughters to look after. They were my number one priority, besides my own issues, which stemmed from the ex's cheating. Those issues, by the way, got resolved with the help of friends, family, and some counseling. So yeah, that's over and done with. I have no issue in communicating with our girls. None whatsoever. About anything else? They can understand it just fine. There's never been any fighting, no yelling, no nonsensical teenage rebellion, thus far, no tantrums thrown, and so on. Pretty great, right? Except for this whole thing. They know about her cheating on me, and it was their mother in fact who told them about it, some three years ago or so. I imagine she's been feeding them some kind of nonsense since then, and I've asked her countless times to stop with it, that it wasn't helping anyone, that it only prevented them from moving on. But the ex-wife didn't stop, she apparently just got subtler about it. In all the years since we divorced, she hasn't dated or been intimate with anyone else. While I suppose she thinks that's admirable, I don't. To be honest, I find it kind of insulting. When we were married, she was with someone else, but now she's just fine going without intimacy for seven years. Whatever. Not that it matters. While I could ignore the occasional mentions of their mother, of how well she looks, and of them showing me photos they took with her, obviously all dolled up for my sake, it's gotten worse lately. Why? Because I have a girlfriend. Clements is not the first since the divorce, but she is the most serious relationship I have had since my marriage ended. She also happens to be eight years my junior. Before getting together as a couple, we knew each other for four years through a shared hobby. So basically, it was a gradual transition from being friends to being involved with each other. I can honestly say I love this woman. It was a surprise to me when I realized that, because while I didn't really want to admit it to myself, I was afraid for a time that what my ex-wife did to me damaged me on some fundamental level and rendered me incapable of ever truly loving someone else, like I once did her. Initially, my daughters had very little to say about our relationship, much like they didn't comment on the previous two I had post-divorce. But then they started coming home, ahead of the schedule we set up in advance, and they'd find me and Clements together, nothing compromising, not being intimate or anything of the sort. Then came the grumbling. Then came the why is she here question. Then came it's not fair to mom what you're doing as if I was actually doing this solely to spite or hurt their mother. So I sat them down and talked. And I talked and I talked but they're just not getting it. They simply won't give up on this preposterous fantasy of theirs where I get back with their mother. 
Clements, thank God, has been understanding and isn't upset by their behavior. She's basically saying to give them time, but I kind of doubt that will work. It hasn't so far, so I have no idea why more time would change anything. Anyway, since I'm really all out of ideas, I figured I might as well ask you folks here if any one of you might have an idea how to handle this. Is there even a way, an approach of any sort, that could work on my daughters realizing I will not, under any circumstances, get back with their mother? Public reactions. User I am just Jenna says, you need a chat with your daughters. You say that whilst your mother and you are good friends and have worked together to give your daughters a stable upbringing, there is no way in hell you are getting back together. You should say that if their mother thinks or says anything to the contrary, it's not going to happen. You say you like Clements and if things go the way you want them to, your future will be with her, not with their mother. OP already did that dozens of times. It just doesn't seem to be reaching them at all. At one point, about a year back, they asked me why I don't want to get back together with their mother. When I brought up her cheating, and I admit that at the time I wasn't sure if I should have done that but I honestly couldn't think of anything else, it turned out their mother had already told them about it several years back. They keep using the same approach every time of how she's faithful to me now. When I pointed out to them that she can't be faithful to me given that we're not together to begin with, they just ignore that. I have talked with my ex-wife about this on numerous occasions, possibly a hundred times by now, about not bringing our adult lives and messing up our daughters. In one ear and out the other, as they say. At one point, I admit, I even contemplated going to court for sole custody, but I was advised it would not work out well for me, so I dropped that approach. User Sunshine Regiment says, Do your daughters know the reason why you divorced? Do they know your ex cheated on you? I don't ever favor telling young kids that, but your daughters are nearly adults. It seems they are laboring under some delusion about why the divorce happened, likely fed to them by their mother without your rebuttal. Perhaps setting the record straight in that regard might help. You don't have to be disrespectful about her, you can be factual and still get the point across. OP, yes and yes. I actually tried telling them about it a year ago, only to find out that their mother told them several years back, when they were just a few months shy of turning 13. They know their mother cheated on me. Now, here's the thing that I think is messing with their minds. They never saw their mother as anything but loving towards me or them. Or at least they don't remember it if they did see her acting coldly and distant with me. During her affair, and yes, it was an affair, not just a one-time thing, not that I wouldn't have divorced her either way, she was very much the opposite of loving in the bedroom. They never really saw that, nor should they have. My approaches for intimacy were often rebuffed and I felt more and more dejected until one day I realized, with the help of a very close and very good friend, that there was nothing wrong with me and therefore something had to be wrong with her, which is what led me to discovering the affair because I started looking for reasons why our love life had suddenly dropped so much in quality and quantity. And it wasn't just intimacy. There were the small things missing from our daily lives too. I know it sounds silly, but we always kissed at the front door, in plain sight, before either of us went to work. That's something that only now in retrospect became plain to see that was missing. Bottom line is, their mother denied me even the most basic of affections while giving it to someone else outside of our marriage. To me, that's unforgivable. They don't understand that, they couldn't, not even if I told them, which I rather wouldn't, and how hurtful it can be when you realize that your spouse didn't really give a damn about you all that much. So all this? All the regret and remorse and pining for us to get back together? To me, it's worthless. What's the point? Where was all this supposed love and guilt and remorse when it should have mattered? Final update. It's been a while since I was first here and I was reminded recently that I owed an update to the kind and good people here who helped me with our troubles. A lot of things have happened. Among those things, my daughters actually stumbled across my post. I had no idea they even browsed Reddit, let alone this place. When I came home one day from work, I found them crying. They pretty much jumped me, hugged me, wouldn't let me go, and begged me to forgive them. Sadly, they had read one of my replies and found out the dreadful extent of my ex-wife's affair and how much it had devastated me. 
It took us a while, but we got through it as a family. There was nothing for me to forgive. They're still young, and they love their mother, who took that love and used it to manipulate them. That's on her, not them. There was some much-needed counseling, but after several months, the woman who was helping us heal and move on has said that nothing more needed to be done, and they should only check in with her once in a while, rather than continue their weekly sessions. We're closer than we were before, but their relationship with their mother has suffered for it. Which I think is completely understandable, but I still cautioned them about lingering too much on what she did, since I had gotten over what she did all those years ago. That was something also resolved in counseling, both their own and our shared ones, so it's all behind us now. I had a brief confrontation with my ex-wife about it and made it clear that she was to not talk about this getting back together nonsense anymore with our daughters. I can't tell if it really got through to her, but my daughters have not been pestered about me since then. Or they simply ignore their mother and don't bring it up at home. Either way, so long as my daughters are doing fine, I couldn't care less about what my ex-wife is doing. Since the situation had improved, things had also become much better between my daughters and my girlfriend, so much that they actually started talking with her, rather than just exchanging terse greetings and goodbyes, even occasionally asking for tips on something, girly stuff, of course, and I can't tell you how much it warmed my heart to see it happening for the first time. I'll admit that it also helped me push my thoughts in the direction of proposing to my girlfriend, who had been incredibly supportive and understanding through all of this. We had known each other for a long time now, spent so much time as a couple, and after all this mess, I didn't really think there was anything more I could do to express my love for her. However, I was beaten to the punch. Two months ago, Clements, together with my daughters, surprised me one day and proposed to me. I have to say that I felt very odd, but also very happy. Not just the proposal, but that my daughters had actually worked with my girlfriend on surprising me that day with dinner and a night out. To put it simply, I was blown away. It was a small and private ceremony, with only our closest friends and family attending. Currently, we're also expecting, and my daughters are looking forward to having a baby brother or sister to spoil. If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.